right, so 5.2, 4 through 7. Let's make sure we feel good about this. We should see a quiz by, I think, Tuesday next week. I tentatively have planned. That should work. And to, to be decided. I have something already online started, but it's it's tough generating the pictures I want online, so I'll probably have it online. We'll do it online. I'll have it. So we'll, uh, I'll make sure you let know when that comes out. Some of you still owe me some old quizzes that are on Schoology. Some of you owe me a pencil and paper quiz or two. So let's make sure those are getting done. If you're ever missing a homework assignment, please make sure you get that uh, submitted to me. There's you don't lose points for having it come in late. So let's take a look at problem number four. It says, give the maximum and mins of the following. So there's two different ways we could do this. I'm going to do it both ways, okay? And you pick the way that you feel most comfortable with, okay? So max and mins um, we're looking for. So first thing I can do is I can take the derivative g prime of x, and that's going to give me 15x to the fourth minus 15x squared. Okay. If I go ahead at this point and say I want to set it equal to zero, remember this is referring to the slope. So then we have to just do a little bit of algebra. It's figured out. So I get 15x squared factored out of both. That leaves me x squared minus 1. And so this is going to give me 15x squared is equal to 0. So x is equal to 0. And then if I were to solve this, this is the difference of two squares. So I should get x equals positive 1 and also x equals negative 1. Now we have to just determine where we're going to have, um, where it could be a max, where it could be a min. And we're going to do that based on our derivative line. Okay. So I have uh, negative 1 here. I have 0 here. I have 1 here. So these are our critical values. So remember the critical value could be a max, min, or a point of inflection. And that's based on our sine line. So if I pick, say, negative 10 on the far left, and the reason I, and you just have to think about what the sign would be. If I took a negative number and plugged it in here, this is a really a negative number. Okay, This would be a really large negative number, so far to the left. This would turn into a positive number because it would turn it to be negative originally and then multiply by the negative 5. But this is going to, because it's raised to the fifth power, make it go a lot faster. So this is a negative number times a positive, or a negative and a positive. Um, so what this is going to do is it's going to give us a very large negative number and a smaller, so we're going to say a large negative and a smaller positive. So that means that this has to be right here is negative region. And then if I picked, say, negative 0.5 and I plug that in, that's either going to be positive or negative. So we're just guesstimating on it. Well, this is going to give me a negative number here. Okay, but this is a pretty small decimal. Yeah, it's 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times negative 0.5, so negative 0.5 times itself, times itself, times itself, times itself, times, itself, times 3 is pretty small, pretty small negative number. And then this is going to give me a positive number. This is going to be a larger number here because as I take 0.5 and I raise it to a power, it becomes a smaller and smaller and smaller decimal. Okay, so this is, the first part would make a small negative, and then I would have a larger negative here, so this region here has to be positive. Okay, so I have a negative slope, and I have a positive slope. Does that form a max or a min where my fingertips are? A min. Okay, so this is going to be a min. And then I could pick 0.5, okay, and that's now a positive number. So if I take 0.5 
and raise it, that's going to be a really small decimal times three. If I take 25 and plug it in here, it's going to be, it's going to fall under these same categories here. Okay, so that I believe should also be a positive. So what do you know that's happening at zero? If both signs are positive. Yeah, that's a point of inflection. Okay, and then if I pick, say, a larger value out here, say something like 10, if I plug 10 in here, that's a really big number, subtracting a smaller number. So this is going to be a um, positive as well. So let's see if we did this math right. And there might be some things that we might not have done correctly so we can see how we can make that difference. So I'm going to go to Desmos and see what that's going to do for us. So Desmos. So this is the other way that you could jump on this. So let's go, uh, we're going to take g at x, make it become y. So y equals 3x raised to the fifth minus 5x raised to the third. Hmm. Okay, so I think I have, so I agree here. Hmm, let's see if am I right or wrong. Okay, so let's see why we might be off a little bit. So they're saying at negative 1, 2, that's a max. They're saying at 0, 0, we have a point of inflection. And let's see at uh, 1, negative 2, we have a min. Let's see how we could have modified that to make it a little bit better. So I'm going to go to my graphing calculator as well. And then you can just use your calculator on your, your phone as well to make sure it's good. Come on, baby. Okay, let's clear that. All right, so we're going back to this. So we claimed between here, so I'm going to take negative 10, plug it in to our original on our graphing calculator. So I have uh, negative 10, I'll plug it in, three parentheses, and maybe I mathematically made an error. And that's raised to the fifth. Okay. Minus 5x to the third. Oops, I needed to make that a negative 10. I'm sorry. Oh, silly me. Delete. That's why I don't like the graphing calculator on here too much. Okay, try this one more time. 3 times 10 raised to the fifth minus, oops, that should have been negative 10. Second insert negative. Come on over. And then minus 5x to the third. Minus 5x. Oh, I don't want that. Negative 10. Raise to the third. Pretty big negative number, so we agree on that as negative to the left. Did I say that originally? I did say that. Where our problem is, is this negative 0.5. Let's just verify that. So what I can do, whenever you're using these calculators, if you hit second enter, <clears throat> you can go in and modify. So I'm going to make this negative 0.5. And change this negative 10 to negative 0.5. Enter. Whoa, whoa. Oh, that's a positive value. Did I say that originally? I thought I did. I did say that. So I think I think our problem, well, that should be the point of inflection. So 
negative slope to positive slope. I have a min there. Maybe I, I can plug it in right to Desmos. Let's do this. What's our derivative? Y equals 15x raised to the fourth minus 15x raised to the third. Got a negative slope, point inflection, negative. Okay. I don't know why I'm off. Probably because your teacher's a moron. All right, so we agree that should be positive on our thing, so we have positive. Then I'm going to go back and I'm going to change that. Just go second enter. And I'm going to get rid of my negatives. I'm going to delete that. Here, clear. Second enter. Okay. Delete. There we go. Delete. And enter. So that's now negative. There's my mistake. This right here should have given us a negative. And then if we plug the 10 back in, see what that happens. Ten and ten. Kid me? Come on. Ten. Okay. Technology is not working for me right now. I'm just gonna go home. Go back home, go to bed. Delete Make that ten. Enter. That gives me a positive. Is that what we had said originally? It gives me positive. Hmm. So negative. It's not showing me what I th I wanted to show us. Give all the max and mins of the following. Well, the fortunate thing is if we get caught up, like I just got caught up, if we graph our original three x raised to the fifth minus five x to the third. we can easily see that we have a max, we have a min, and we have a point of inflection. Those are very obvious how they set up. So that might be our saving grace on some of those. So if you go to <clears throat> number five, just grab it the same way. So you got y equals parentheses x squared <clears throat> minus 4x. That's raised to the second power plus 5. What can you tell me about there, there, and there? What can you tell me of the point 0, 5? <clears throat> Men, 221. Max, 4, 5. Men, no point of inflection on that one. <clears throat> All right, so got away from those. I'm not sure why that first one didn't work out the way I wanted it to. Yikes. All right, number six. Given the graph f at x, complete the f prime chart. So problem number six. This is our f prime chart. 
And we had a graph that kind of looked like this. Nope. So come down this. Come up. It's at one. That appears to be at negative two. All right, so we can, <clears throat> if we had our original function, we wanted to do our f prime chart, things that we're going to list, negative 2 and 1 are going to exist. So we have negative to negative. This verifies that we have that point of inflection right here. And then at 1 to the right, this becomes positive. And it goes from a negative slope to a positive slope, this would be a max. And that's pretty as straightforward as you get. And then number seven, they gave you the F prime chart. And we're supposed to make our supposed to make our graph the best we can of what it could look like. So being we know that we have a I'm going to put the negative one or excuse me the one, the three, and the five. So we have a negative slope here, goes to a positive slope here. We have a point of inflection here and does something like that. So that this might come up a little bit more and then come back down. So that for the most part is going to be our graph. Okay. All right. So, what what would be our saving grace for a lot of these? Desmos, which I've asked you all to load on your phones. <clears throat> so I think you can finish up worksheet 5.2. And so basically tomorrow I'm going to check off 8 through 10. There's one word that they start using. There's a a word that have roots, and then they call it polysim. Okay, you don't have to worry about the word polysim. Just know that the word roots, that's where it crosses the x axis. So you have the opportunity to get a good start on this, get caught up.